miracles happen every day, someplace, to someone. And if you're in my life, they happen more often than not. And for those that are trying to find Babaji or some great saint or some great one, I'm telling you, if you love others and you see them as a reflection of God, that's all you need to do. I, I, I meet a lot of people and they go, well, I, wa I want to go to this this place where Vision Mary happened, it's a sacred place. I want to go to this place in India, the sacred temple, the sacred cave, this, you know, all these places are going to make me, you know, I'm telling people, close your eyes. There is no place outside of you. And when you go to these sacred places and close your eyes and pray or meditate, there's no difference between that and in your front room. But it is your frequency of feeling you're in a sacred place. And you've opened up, there is a, an energy there, even though there is no there, it's all here. There's an energy there because you're tapping into it. So when you go to a place where people have prayed for thousands of years, it's a different vibration. It's subtle, but you can feel it. Some people, you feel it. I have spent my whole entire life going on 78 years having one supernatural experience after another. Here's the key, though. Never once did I sit down and say, I want this to happen. I'm looking for this. Never looking for any experience. So people tell me, well, I, I want to find Babaji. And I'm saying, well, good luck. Whatever you chase and pursue, will you'll never catch. You love Babaji. You love God. The side effect, eventually you'll... You'll meet them. But if that's your goal, don't go there. It's just not going to happen. Now, probably the most profound experience I ever had, and I, you know, so I narrowed it down. Uh, anybody know what a rainbow body experience is? Then you're just like I was about 30, 40 years ago. I was meditating. It was my typical night. I used to meditate like from about 8 o'clock at night when the family went down. I'd meditate till about midnight. About four hours. And then a couple hours in the morning, like from three to four or five or six or something. And you wonder, when did I sleep, right? But if you really have some solid meditation, that's better than sleep. So this one night was an extremely blissful meditation. And I finished and I went to bed and I was still holding that state. I was still even though I wasn't officially, formally going through all the things, I was still meditative. And I'm laying down to sleep, and there's a, a picture of Paramahansa Yogananda in the nightstand. Remember, the same picture that was there for the out-of-body experience. This was just a few months later. And I'm staring at the eyes. Here's some. If you want, quote-unquote, an experience, take a picture of your favorite saint, sage, God, whatever you want, Buddha, Jesus, you know, whatever you think is inspiring to you, and you look at a drawing or a photo of a guru or whatever it is, if you focus on their eyes with your heart and your eyes, and you just give love to that image that you're looking at, and the simple mantra of, I love you, mentally over and over again, 10 or 15 minutes, you will be in a very similar samadhi type state. You will see it come alive, you'll see it move, and you will find yourself <laughs> drawn in. So this is what kind of happened. I'm staring at it and, and just saying, I love you to, to go to uh, Yogananda, and it just, boom, and I'm out of my body. I'm out of any kind of, I'm, I find myself traveling like a, a, a However thick a rainbow is, it's a film, right, of color, right? Just I'm a rainbow, and I'm shooting through creation, whatever that is. It was kind of like Star Trek, going into warp speed, and all the lights come by. It was like that. So I thought, for about 20 years, I thought I was really traveling, you know, faster than light, and all this stuff is happening. And 
And then I woke up one day, and I'll get back to the experience, but then I woke up one day about 30 years later after having a dream and I realized I couldn't be traveling anywhere because every direction was coming at me, meaning it wasn't travel, it was consciousness expansion. You're expanding awareness and it's just going out faster than the, the rate of speed of light. And I found myself in this experience, one with everything I saw, heard, seen, felt, everything that was there was just an extension of me. It was all one. And there was a prevalent sound that the universe made. You know, with all I talked earlier about string theory and all these things, atoms and stuff, all these things are making, there's movement. That movement creates a sound. And that sound is home. Or in other religions, Amen. But there's a sound that the universe, the creative force of the universe, the energy makes this sound. In the beginning was the word, and the word was oh, right? It was a sound. And that sound is a sound of love. So if you're resonating in love, you're actually resonating in the sound of home. It's all frequencies. And when you tune into that, it's just, anyway, so it'll go back to there's only now. But in this experience, I found myself traveling in a, a rainbow, what I call a rainbow body. Not meaning just me, but there was other consciousness composed in this rainbow. I was not alone. It was like, might have been a pinky finger, but there's the rest of these fingers here too, right? So like there's cells, you know, and it makes up this body. It was like we're a cell in this thing, and we're traveling together, and everybody's vibrating at the same high frequency. And when I was, what I was going to say, wasn't, wasn't taught, I wasn't told, I remembered. This is my birthplace. This is where I've been. This is where I reincarnate to and from. This rainbow body is this body of souls, servants, called the great sacrifice. They keep coming back and back and back to lives, even though they've mastered some level. Now this could all be crap. Who knows? I'm just telling you the experience. You know, I could be a crazy man. But it's, people would leave, people, these souls would leave, they'd go to Earth or someplace like Earth, and their job was spiritual evolution for that planet they go into. And they go in, they don't remember nothing, who they are, what they are until the last few years of life. They suffer pain, all kinds of agony, tests, stuff, and overcome it from the regular physical being that they are. And at the end, they, they get back their magic. And they keep recycling and recycling and recycling. So that's the story I was picking up from this. And I'm traveling in this, this family unit. And there's no time and space, but we try and verse about 300 million years. I'm seeing the beginning of a lot of stuff in this solar system. I'm seeing stuff end. I'm seeing both ends of this thing. I'm, I'm all over this thing, just wherever I want to focus. It's all there. 300 million years, it's all there, right? And it wasn't until I had a thought about my wife and children. I remembered the I story. I went from the oneness to I have a story. I have a family. And, and it was instantaneously gone. Boom. 2,000 pounds back in a body. Laying in bed crying. I cried for over a day or two. I mean, I was just... I gave up that to come back to my I story. Here I am, right? But when I didn't identify with that myself, I just identified as the one I have shown this beautiful experience. And I was given so much information, recalled it, not necessarily given. Some of it I can never tell. I mean, verboten, can't tell. Some of it I would like to tell, but I can't remember. It's like, but as time goes by, I, I remember every five or six years, oh, yeah, that's the, yeah, okay. 
So pieces keep coming back, and there's stuff I initially remember. And I'm telling you right now, this is there's no doomsday out there right now. There's no end of times coming. We're the beginning of something new and beautiful. It just doesn't look like it. You tell the mother when she's in birth process and she's in pain and the kicking and all the stuff's going on. This is the greatest thing in the world. Oh, yeah, it's easy for you to say. That's where we're at. We're birthing a new us. And it's painful. And we can either join the naysayers and all the negativity of all these other people. Or we can become part of the process. Now, it doesn't take but a small minority of people to become What's the word I'm looking for? For the core, what, what's the, the, there's a core group. It doesn't take much. I'm looking for the word for that, that tips the scale of energy. In other words, if you take somebody, uh, the normal person, let's say 200 uh, uh, frequency level, just throw a number out, 200. And, and so all those people are on this negative plane, and their one person is one person. But then the next level up, 300. Those people's energy is like having three times as much. And then you go to the next level up, it's like for, they influence 100 times greater than themselves. And then you get up to a level where tens of thousands or hundred thousands or millions. And then if you get up to Buddha, Krishna, you know, Jesus, billions you affect the world with this heavy vibration. So these souls, and they don't take many of them, we could have some guy living in a hollow in an apartment. Nobody knows. Some quiet Japanese guy sitting in an apartment just doing his daily Zen. And he's got this magic power that's stopping atomic bombs from falling someplace, right? We don't know the influence of these great spiritual. I'm telling you right now, there are great spiritual beings. I have met some. And I've met some. There are great spiritual beings with no million followers on Facebook, no likes, no, you know, none of that stuff. No website, no Facebook page. Just look like ordinary people. Some are in a cave. Some are wearing a suit and tie. They don't know who they are. But the energy and frequency of these people are changing things. Now, the good news is this. You, I, this group, we raise our consciousness. We raise our frequency. Our energy together is changing the outcome of everything that happens in the world. You can surrender to this. All this stuff's going to happen, blah, blah, blah. Or you can go, you know what? I'm choosing love. Love trumps all. Short term, you're going to go, oh, look at all this stuff, you know. Love don't work, love more. Forgiveness doesn't work, forgive more. Don't sell your energy out. You're given this life, it is a gift. To have an earth life is a gift. Don't ever give up on it. Don't ever check out. No, you're not going to go to hell if you commit suicide. I think if I hear one more parent, I have to hear some church tell them that their kid's going to hell forever. No. But I don't believe in a God that would punish you forever because you were mentally ill and despondent. I mean, you know, who believes in a God that wants to punish people forever? I believe in a God that loves us, forgives us. I believe in divine grace. The grace that we were given is dependent on us asking for it. It just doesn't, oh, I'm going to give you divine grace. Would you do that to somebody who never said they were sorry, confessed their sins, and wanted to change? Well, I'm going to give you a break, take you off death row. Well, I ain't sorry about killing anybody. That's okay. We're going to give you divine grace. No, it's not how it works. You reach a point and you go, you know what? I was wrong. I'm changing. The new me is this one I've just created in the future. It's That's not me anymore. Grace is one of the most beautiful things about... That's about the only thing I believe in. What do you believe in doctrine? I believe in divine grace. But I also believe that you have to earn it. You can't say, I'm sorry, but you don't make restitution. I'm sorry I cheated out of that money, but I'm not going to pay you back. You know, I mean, that's not. So, 
You were all born to love. But some of you have been born in houses where you were not fully loved. You were not fully embraced. You were not understood. You were not cuddled. You were not hugged. You weren't appreciated. In fact, you may have been told by your parents you're stupid, you're ugly, you never amount to anything. And if that is you, congratulations, because that's the first people I look for for spiritual evolution, because those people get it, and they're going to do nothing but go up for there. you got a choice. You can become the victim, or you say, you know what? I've seen the bad example. I'm moving forward. But the people on the greatest spiritual paths have had this, pardon the expression, crappy childhood. Terrible things. It's just like, what? You've been raped. This has happened. You know, all kinds of crazy things. You've been beaten. But you never gave up. Not how many times you get knocked down. You know, the old expression, how many times. It's just, all you got to do is get it one more time. Life is here not to punish you. And at times we feel that way. Oh my God, why, God, why is God punishing me? God's not punishing you. Every, this is the hard part. Everything that transpires that happens in your life, you created. You manifested. It's not an accident. You're not a victim. All this, all this stuff. No. And when you own it, you also realize that, well, if I created this, I can also uncreate it. I can create something new and better. That's the good news. Own up to it. You know, okay, I messed up. Uh, all these crazy things happened. But that was yesterday. When you wake up in the morning, to me, the true, the true meaning of being born again is in the morning, become a new person. Today, my intentions is to be a loving, caring, compassionate soul. I'm going to be there for my children. I'll be there for my spouse. I'll be there for my boss. I'll be there for my neighbors. I'll, I love my I love my enemy. Anyway, every day start off with the intention of being present, giving love. It's not a hard concept, but people they make much more out of it than should be. What's your purpose in life? Uh, I don't know. To love and serve. You got a billion ways to serve. There's no love that's too small. Everything counts. You never know when you do something nice for somebody how it may have changed their life. That's like that stupid story on the internet. I don't even know if it's even true because, you know, you, you read these things and I've read it so many times. What's that stupid one where the, the kid goes to school in high school and he clears all his books out of his locker and he's walking home with all these books, and, you know, because he's been bullied, he has no friends. He's taking all his books home and he's going to commit suicide that day, right? He just cleaned out his locker. And then he meets this guy coming home and the guy befriends him and does all kinds. And the next thing you know, he makes friends with this guy. And then years later, the guy finds out that he actually saved the guy's life because he befriended him. And the guy goes, oh, I got a friend. You know, the whole world's not against me. I'm telling you right now, you got a friend. The creator. And you are the creator. The power, let me see, the power is in with you. <laughs> Brothers, sisters, amen, hallelujah. Hear me out. Get going, right? River and I, right? There we go. So, we are in control. Now, when I look at this audience, I don't see 40, 50 people. I see us. Us is one. This is a bit English, right? Us is one. It's just one consciousness. Think about that. So if I hurt you, in some way or manner, I'm actually hurting myself. If I wish you well and success and I help you to succeed, I've actually helped myself to better place as well. But how many people you see when you get a promotion or some people hate you, you win the lotto, they say, oh, I should have won, I should have won. I mean, it gets... People are jealous, envious. And everybody nowadays, if you're on Facebook, you know, everybody's a critic. I mean, write a book, tell me about it. You know, I read your book. You're, you're going to go to hell. I mean, you, you tell people there's no hell. You know what I mean? God damn you. I mean, you're going to be going bad. I'm going, really? 
They'll tell people there's no devil. I said, well, if you believe in the devil, I believe in the devil. I said, great. I'm happy for you that you wish everybody else was going to go burn for eternity, but do you want to believe that? Go ahead. So right now we got a church system out there. I don't want to step on any toes, but we got a church system out there that if they can't win you with love, they're going to win you over with fear. If you don't take Jesus or Buddha or Muhammad or whatever you want to follow, if you're not following their leader, you're going to hell because that's the only way. God don't have no religion. God don't care. God don't care if you burn incense or candles, do the rosary, if you pray to the east, the west, doesn't make no difference. All God cares about is what's in your heart. Do you love the greater self? Now, if you want to practice whatever religion you want, then do so with love. Don't be a hypocrite. You know, and let's, let's get real. Most religions, it's really a cultural, social thing. Your family, your friends, your culture. Well, don't disrespect it. If you're comfortable enough with it, follow it. But inside, know that God don't care what religion you are. There are no chosen people. We're all one. How can you have chosen people when we're all one? Every one of us is going to be, are now, if they were tuned on it, we're all enlightened. We're already there. I'm giving you this lecture from the past. What do you mean, we're in the present? No, are we? Sometime in the future, you'll remember back on this and go, oh, yeah, he said that was... Because you're already in tune with this evolutionary process. Everybody in this room, you wouldn't be here. We are going someplace. And as people like myself, don't look for me. I'm a bus driver on this bus. We're all going to get on a bus together. And you know what? When I pull up the bus, we all get off the same place, right? Bus drivers, no more privilege than anybody else. But it's my honor to drive the bus for you. That's all. It's just what we do. We are either going to make it as a species <laughs> and stick together, or we're going to disintegrate. Something's happening here. And I'm telling you, I'm really betting on the positive. I'm saying that this now, this year, I don't know what this trolley chart show, but we're getting ready to go boom in a new direction. And for those that missed my healing thing to yesterday, I'm telling you this. If you've been looking at me, and I've been looking at you, what you've been hoping for has already happened. It's up to you to accept that. I don't need to do hands-on with anybody. But I'm here for you. And I'll tell you this. Reverend Bill loves you. Because, you. thank you. <laughs> and I, I truly see the goodness in all of you. Some of you got oh, regrets. I did this. How could how could for building my background? Knew all the terrible things I did. No, it doesn't matter. Fred Bill say we're all one. 